What's the result? Yes. It's up. It's exciting. The ones that are leading the way are our conservative voting locations. Yes. Yes. What does that mean? That means the ones that think everything's all hunky-dory or staying home, and the ones that are tired of the way that this country's going, we're getting out to the voting booths, and we're getting our neighbors, we're taking our friends, we're taking our aunts and uncles and our husbands and our wives, and we're making sure that our voices are going to be heard this election cycle. We cannot become complacent. We have to be built, built vigilant in getting people to the voting booths. And we have to do this because if we don't, we may not have in another election cycle that we can make a significant change in. We have to do that this November. If we want a voice to be heard at the state level, and we want a voice to be heard in the Washington level, we have to get Republicans in office. And the reason is, is because they have no voice to make any type of change up in Washington or in our state level. We have to get our conservatives in office. And right now, conservative does not equate to Democrats. That's how it is. Do we have a Democrat in our, in our place, a representative from the Democrat party right now? Anybody? Raise your hand, stand up, say I'm here. What does that tell us? That tells us they're not here to listen to you. They're not here to represent you. They're not here to say, we're taxing you too much. We're listening to what the Tea Party movement's all about. Because we are not a Republican thing. We're not a Democrat thing. We are taxed enough already. And they're not here listening to that message. I got an email the other day with their concern about our energy that the Tea Party movement is creating across this country. Their energy, they want us to stop because they want, quote, their progressive Democrats in office. Definition of prog pro progressive. To move forward. To progress. Does that mean that they're looking back to our founding fathers and what our roots are from? No. No. They're wanting to change this country. And they're wanting to change it to a statist environment. And that means you and you and you are going to have to be working for them. You're not working for yourself. It means you can't obtain private property. It means that you can't decide what a consumer-based market is all about. They're going to dictate to that all to us. They're going to tell you what you should be paying for gas, what you should be paying to your doctor, whether or not you get a certain prescription or not. Are you worth it or not? That's not what America is about. We decide what we want. We decide that we're going to work. We decide how we want to build our wealth. Not the government. The government does not define that for us. And that's what we're here about. And we have to keep this energy up. You have to keep talking. You have to keep emailing. You have to get on the web and push. You have to make phone calls. You have to do things that make you uncomfortable. Because if you don't, you're not going to get a chance to do it again. Without further ado, Mr. Bob Jones has graced us with his presence this afternoon. Hey, I'm scared of her. If I'm scared of her, I'm scared of y'all, and they ought to be as scared of us. Am I right? I'm going to stay here probably as close to far as I can because then I have to leave to go to the Live Oak Coliseum where they want me to MC an event out there and Eddie Zamora, he's running and they got barbecue and all that. Todd, I don't know how you do it. How you go to all these places and not gain weight? They want you to speak, they want you to eat, 
They want you to shake hands, but you know what? This is a battle worth waging. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the challenge that we get an opportunity to earn our citizenship. You know, when I went to Vietnam, I came back, the government said go. I didn't check out the political ramifications. They said go. Some of my classmates was going. And at high school in 65, 66, I was in the Army. By 67, I was in Vietnam, Republic of. Uh, I turned, well, I ain't gonna tell my age. But anyway, I turned 20 on January 25th, 1968. Five days later, the Tet Offensive, you know, you know the rest, God blessed me to make it out of there. I came back, and you know what it meant to me? It meant to me that I was no longer riding on the back, and I was grateful for World War II, World War I, Spanish American War, all of the veterans who had fought before so that I could enjoy the benefits of freedom to this country and the opportunity I was now coming back having paid my own way, having served myself, put my own blood on the line. And what I wanted when I got back to this country was one thing and one thing only, Todd, Todd Hunter, Sheriff Kalen. I only wanted what the Constitution of the United States gave every single citizen. I didn't want more. I didn't want less. I just wanted what everybody else was entitled to, and that was an opportunity to succeed against a chance that I might fail, but I wanted the opportunity. And today, what this battle is all about is we are fighting that that same opportunity will now be available to our children, and to our children's children, and to their children, and you might not be in the military, but it's time to fight. that you've enjoyed on the line to ensure that another generation can enjoy it. I have a special guest with me today. I'm going to point you out. Norm Brown, we went to high school together about 40-some years ago. <laughs> and he came in from Macon, Georgia to, to visit me. We had met a couple of years ago at the family at a, at a high school reunion. I hadn't been to the high school in all those times. His shirt says, join the party. The party, you know, that's the kind of fancy way of saying party, y'all. But he's here, and we've been traveling around, and uh, Norm Brown was on the radio with me yesterday, and with Dr. Kirk.